All right, so today I want to talk about the new US covariance matrix. Um, uh, let me pull up the slides. All right, cool. So um, my name's Logan, and um, I pulled most of these notes from uh, Dr. Brian Boyer's um, notes. So a uh, courtesy to him for um, letting me use them. Uh, so a couple basics, the new US covariance matrix involves covariances and it's a matrix. So I'm gonna assume a little bit of knowledge of both of those and uh, we'll move from there. So first off, um, Nui West can be understood uh, pretty easily um, after understanding the univariate um, intuition. Um, let's, let's say we have some variance of uh, X bar that we wanna calculate. Well, uh, the variance of X bar is just uh, addition of what x bar is that's how we got that inside of, um, that inside argument pull out one over t uh, when you have variances you square them on the way out uh, you can see that straightforward from the definition of variance and um, we have t of those so we have t variance x and so that's how we get our uh, variance of x bar as be as being one over t variance of x so that's that but if we have a heteroscedastic um, errors or auto and autocorrelation. Um, basically, the formula doesn't reduce quite as nicely. We start off at the same place. Um, but when we uh, try to, when we break apart the variance, uh, we end up with all the covariance terms. So you kind of end up with like a grid of covariance terms that we have to add up. Um, and then one little side note, it's important to keep in mind that we'll be kind of be talking about grids a little bit. But just remember that we're aggregating these grids into a scalar. So, so don't get confused because this is just the univariate case. So we're gonna have a scalar for our final variance. Um, so now that we have this kind of grid of covariance terms, we can rearrange it and write it a slightly different way. Um, um, I guess in computer science, if you think about I equals one as being your outside of the for loop and your J equals one as the inside, um, we kind of have uh, like this first term times all the ones on the inside. And so that's that first time. And then once we go to iterate the next time, we're gonna shift I to two. Um, and then we just repeat so on and so forth through all T observations. All right. So I think we're making sense so far. So let's keep going. Um, so let's kind of visualize this. So let's say we have 10, 10, uh, 10, period uh, 10 periods that we watched whatever process we're interested in. Um, uh, we can think of that process as being related to itself somehow. So we end up with like this grid, all right? So this is like, let's say this is what the time is right now. This is what the time was um, in the past or whatever. Um, and we're just gonna figure out all the covariance terms. So uh, first one um, is zero. Uh, I guess, I guess uh, <laughs> so this grid's to find covariance terms, but let's just, but in, in this example, we're just gonna talk about um, uh, what the difference is between all the times, right? So, so if the time, so the time shift between one and one is zero, the time shift between two and one is one, because it's just it, okay. So I think we kind of get the process. We just fill out the rest of the guy, um, and we kind of notice some nice patterns um, along the diagonal. We have these zeros um, along the ones. We have, um, or along the next, uh, I guess it's a super diagonal. We have ones, twos, so on and so forth. All right. A um, couple little patterns to maybe notice is um, this main diagonal has T elements or 10 elements in this case. The next one's going to have nine because uh, we have to have, we have to be able to lag at once, right? So we're starting at two and then going to 10. We're starting at three. And then with two, we're starting at three going to 10. Um, yeah, so, so basically that's how, many, that's how many terms we're gonna have. So uh, using that a little bit, um, let's assume that the distance between two observations goes to zero after we have greater than a lag of Q. All right, so as soon as, as, soon as, um, as, soon as um, observations are more than uh, Q periods apart, we, we say that there's, we're just gonna say there's no covariance between them. And so looking at this, um, let's say like only our colored boxes are the ones that we keep. 
Oh, then what would Q equal in this case? Well, T minus S needs to be greater than Q, right? For it to go to zero. So in this case, our, our Q is two, right? So, because um, once it goes past two, we no longer include them. And so uh, that means we're gonna count, count all the way up to three. In other words, we're gonna count to Q plus one. And, uh, and, uh, and remember, as we're shifting this way, we're kind of dropping, um, we're, we're losing one turn each time because we can only work with what data we have available. All right, so, so um, now that we've assumed that, we're gonna rearrange our uh, variance of X bar term. Um, we, uh, so, we, so, so this is like the definition that we had before. But now we're going to drop a bunch of terms. So like um, if you, you can kind of see the grid in this, if you think about it just a little abstractly, I suppose. So this first one, that's the top left-hand corner. Um, this will be the, the one right below that. But then if you go over one, as you break apart the covariance terms, you kind of see that matrix, right? Um, so uh, we're going to aggregate it. Um, like I said, um, with the variance of x of t, we start from t and we t equals one and we go to t. But then on the next one, we're going to have one less term. So let's increment it by one. And we want the off diagonal pieces, right? So, so this would be like um, that vertical part we saw. Oh, sweet. I pulled up one more time. All right, sweet. So uh, yeah, let's just, let's just look at it right away. Um, so um, you should be able to see that this diagonal is all these terms. When t equals two, um, let's just see how it's the blue one. So we'll walk through this first one. Um, we'll say, okay, so t equals two. So that means we're at time equals two, right? And then um, this is t minus one. So, uh, so we're in this column and this row. So now we have one. And then uh, as we increment it, we're gonna step along this diagonal. And then on this one, we're doing the opposite side. Um, so, so that's why we have two terms here and we're just aggregating them all together. And we go all the way up to Q plus one um, because in order to get to a lag of Q, we have to go up to T plus one, right? And, and so, and so that's, that's kind of how that all works. Um, so uh, now what we want to do is we want to find some estimate of these terms. Well, the definition of covariance is we take the expected value of these guys, but since we only have one observation, we're just going to use an approximation as as um, just a single term, because so, that's the best we can do with, with what information we have. So um, let's, uh, let's assign a couple new terms. Um, we're gonna say gamma naught is equal to this. Uh, this should look a lot like variances, right? We're just adding up a bunch of variances and averaging them. And then, uh, same, and then this should look pretty familiar too. Uh, it's a little bit, I guess, more abstract. Basically what we do is we, we assign some subscript and the subscript here tells us where we start. And, and it also tells us how big the lag is. Um, and so this is gonna get those diagonal terms. Um, it's only gonna get one side of the diagonal terms. Uh, so so oh, I guess we'll see in just one second, um, but it's really not too bad. But if we have our variance of X bar looking like this right now, then um, we can, so this whole term becomes this guy and like this left side becomes, uh, actually I don't remember exactly what, which the definition I showed on the other side. But basically this one gets the left side, this guy gets the right side, and then we're counting over all of them. So, um, and we can see that the lag starts off at one, right? Um, let's throw up the definitions. So, so if we have one here, um, well, then there's gonna be a one here. If we have a one there, then we have a one here. So we start at two and we're going back one. And so that's gonna be a lag between these two terms of one, all right? And then so on and so forth, all the way up to Q. Cause we can count all through Q. We just count, we just can't count after Q. All right, um, so now let's just talk real quickly about the central limit theorem. Um, this is what the central limit theorem says. It says that um, if we take X bar and we subtract uh, the expected value of X bar, and, um, and like we just kept sampling those types of things, we get something that converges to a normal distribution as, as, a, as our sample size goes to infinity. All right, so that should make sense. Um, so, <laughs> um, oh man, I didn't write it up. 
but our variance of the x bar is is this guy, right? Doesn't this look like pretty familiar? Um, I guess you don't really need to know, but like uh, remember how we started off with variance of x bar is equal to one over t of variance of x. So this is basically our variance of x term. So depending on how you're used to thinking about the central limit theorem, you can think about a, a couple of different ways. I personally, I'm I, I just am fond of this way. Um, so that's why I wrote it like that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess some people like to think about it with a root n and stuff. For me, I think that's a little bit confusing. It's not too bad, but I just feel like it's a little a little bit more work than it needs to be. Um, so yeah, so then uh, that's how we get our variance of um, our variance. But then um, what, what we uh, what we need to what what uh, what was shown is that it turns out that uh, this new US covariance matrix can sometimes be less than zero. Um, well, this is in the matrix, yes. Th this little scalar approximation of variance can sometimes be uh, less than zero because of those covariance terms. And, it's, um, and it turns out that if you weight them in this way, then they will never be negative. I've never like run some tests or like looked at the math super carefully to understand how that works, but, um, but um, apparently it works. So, so, uh, so this is just like, a, so this is the tilde squiggly, right? Um, like this is just um, our, it's just the, this is for variance of X, not variance of X bar, all right? So, so if we put it back into our uh, central limit theorem, uh, we just replace the numerator with this, with this new guy. And we keep that T on the bottom. Um, what is there to think about? I think that's most of it. I think, uh, yeah, I was getting ready to do the multivariate case, but then I got a little bit tired, I guess. Um, and I feel like this, re really the multivariate case is almost exactly the same as the univariate case, but instead of um, having one variable, you have all the variables you're interested in, um, right? So uh, basically, um, all those like scalar terms that we're getting with the covariances, those are all just little matrices and you add them all up. And so maybe it's actually a good, good exercise to do it yourself um, just to uh, make sure that this made sense, but it really shouldn't be that big of a jump. But um, if this somehow becomes popular and people want it, then I'm happy to make another video. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything. Hopefully we covered stuff uh, well enough um, and hopefully there's not, any gaps that are too big that you can't fill in on your like uh, on your own but if you have any questions definitely leave a comment um yeah all right till next time